YouTube user big on you. Today I'm putting together MDF line. So with an Asus M1A motherboard. There's the board. Okay. And there is no USB 3.0 plug in, so I bought an adapter card so I could plug it in for the case that I have, which is a Cooler Master. And you see it has the USB 3.0 point there. So, you see right here also I have the um, M1A A, the M1 M A motherboard and I, this is a pretty small motherboard but it's a micro ATX and this case only allows for uh, IPX ATX and this is a this is like one of the smallest micro ATX there is and what I was hoping for was to be able to try to squeeze a micro ATX into this board so for all those who might have that same thought for this case it won't work so it's just a little too big as you can see here it's just a little I mean, just a little bit there and if I actually lined up the holes correctly it's a little bit more than that so it won't work no micro ATX unless you can find one smaller than this and but this is all this um, that I could find as far as um, micro ATX and the dimensions when researching. Case. Here's the USB 3.0 plug in. Got a little fan right here. It takes a full size power supply. So I'm going to go with the modular one, which is right there CX430M. The one that I'm going to be going with. And nothing else too spectacular. It does hold up. 2.5 hard drive so that's sweet I don't have to use an adapter that's pretty much it you have a hole on the back here for water cool if you plan on doing something like that I actually like this case it's nice portable and easy to work with um, once you get everything installed that is as far as function having it on a desk or having it on a floor or something it's very easy to work with. I only have the G Skill Sniper around that we're going to put in here. Okay, and so that's pretty much it as far as that goes. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and install the processor and heat sink on this. I've never actually um, installed the new ones. So, I'm interested in how well this F line will work. I've been reading up on it, and it seems like it's going to be a hell of a performer. So, here we go. There's a processor, a little booklet. AMD sticker. Here's the processor. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, install this. So all I'm gonna do is zoom in for you. Pretty sure you guys know how to put in a processor, but this is for the people who usually tend to ask me. So I'm just gonna move this lever here out and up that's it and as you can see it, it moves when you do that so well 
lock there. Unlock. Straight up. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the processor. And all we're gonna do is look for this little notch right here. It's gold. I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but it's, little, it's gold. So that's gonna tell me where on the motherboard I'm gonna install it. And if you look with the on the board, usually there is a notch to let you know where you're gonna install it. And you can also look on the back by the pins themselves and see how that they how they're arranged. And that's a good idea also to let you know how it's gonna go. But um usually there's a little notch right in the corner and that's how you know exactly how to place this so I'm gonna look for that notch and I'm blind as a bat so you have to excuse me and right away I can tell just it's gonna be right here because it's square and there's no other square on here as far as holes it's just square right there so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and put that in so it's real simple just literally I'm just gonna move it over the holes and set it down and it just dropped in I didn't do much anything there just once I got it in there correctly it just basically dropped in so let's see here I'll give you a better view so let's lift it up in just drop right in okay so the AMD F line is facing up towards the memory sticks for this particular board so now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lock it in so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, let me see, get you a better view here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this back and lock it in. Over, and that's locked in. So then I'm gonna put some um, I have some thermal grease that I'm gonna install. This is pretty cool thermal paste because you literally just brush it on so and it's going to give you a nice smooth layer let me see if I can line this up super thermal grease I zone it and it's on outside and it's like a brush and you literally just brush it in and you're not trying to put a whole lot on here that's a common mistake a lot of people make um, but if this get too wet um, it, it'll spill out that happened to me on a couple of occasions so um and it sometimes it could dry up too and you don't get much of anything so um you got to keep this at a good room temperature um nice and cool so let me get a couple of mines that are already dried up so i'm trying to find one that isn't okay here's one that isn't dried up So, again, it just brushes on, and it's a very, very thin layer. This is not a lot of thermal grease that's about to get applied here. It's very thin. And as you see, it goes on very thin. Um, it's not a whole lot on this brush right now. So I'm going to re-dip it after I line it up. And this is a thin, thin, thin layer. I can't stress to you how thin of a layer of thermal grease this is. This isn't goops and gobs or any of that mess. So let me see if I can do this. And I'm running out as you can see. Usually it goes on a lot smoother. But I got bottles and bottles of this stuff, but sometimes I make a mistake and leave the top off which is stupid because um, it's kind of expensive. So, I got a couple more bottles. 
rolls. Just to show you how often I use this. This is this three here, then I got three more on top of the desk. So um let me see if I can find one. It's full. I'm just going back and forth. Back um from back to front. And I'm just literally just brushing it on. And this I can't stress how thin of a layer of, of thermal grease this is. It may look like something different on the camera but this is a very thin layer it's it's as if you um, some people use the credit card technique where they put the gob and then they smooth it out with this I don't even, I don't have to worry about that this is it's nice and smooth just to show you that it's not gooped up on there look at that you can barely see it you can barely see the film really nice and thin layer you couldn't ask for anything better for something to go on that smooth and you'd be pretty hard pressed to do that yourself with a credit card or something so here's the heat sink and it's got a, a thin layer on here and usually sometimes I, I go ahead and knock that off but I'm not overly concerned because um, it's not that big of a deal to me to be honest with you. It's not going to affect anything because I'm running out of the other thermal grease. I really don't have a whole lot of options. So I'm just getting the clips out. Getting everything out and here's everything that came in the bag. Okay. And I've never installed this before, so this is gonna be a first, but I don't think it should be that bad. Let me see here. I just press the one through here. I'm pretty sure that's how it's gonna go. pin to secure them in on both sides so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead now place this over here Let's see where my CPU fan plug ends at so how far I want this going set that on top so it's a very light thin um, heat sink okay let me see if I can get you a good view You gotta press a little hard to get this through. And you want the sticking out partially. So I'm gonna show you on this one here. And try not to get my hands in the way. So I'm just gonna press down on this. I'm gonna turn it this way. And 
just went through that's it's quite a bit of pressure so um don't be too nervous when you do it because it is a lot of pressure so now for me to get a good grip on it just press it some more to go right through there and just making sure that it actually reached which it does so that I know I get it all the way through it, it does reach the hole here so then I'm going to take one of the pins and I'm going to stick them in stick it inside here and lock this in man this is a lot of pressure And it's locked in. So as you see back here, press on them. It's locked in. And it's locked in. So this is quite a bit of pressure. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um I wouldn't be upset personally if someone came out with a better aftermarket one this it's my first time ever doing it but I don't like it I really don't no. it's in there though and it's in there it's not going anywhere but I don't like it so basically you, you press this down in here before you put the clip in and you just get it through the hole and then this is going to expand it to kind of lock it in and here some instructions be pretty much tell you the same thing and it sticks up a little bit too kind of show you here and, uh, but it's in there And to get it out, basically, you just lift up on a pin and then pull this out, and it should come right out. Obviously, you know, when working with this, you want to be working on top of an anti static mat with your feet or have a wristband tied to you um, because it look, um, ESD is probable. But I'll be honest with you, I never had an issue. But like I said, I, keeping working on top of an anti static mat and things like that. They're fairly cheap and it's not that big of a deal. So that's it. That's the install. AMD Athlon CPU into that AM1. I8 motherboard. Arbor YouTube user, big on you. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting this together. You see all my thermal grease there. It's ridiculous. I'm going to go ahead and finish installing the motherboard in this. And, and I might show you guys a afterwards picture or something. No sense in you You're watching me sit here and build this. Um, cut up my hand on these cases like I usually do. Alright, if you um, got any suggestions or comments or something, please post them in the bottom of the board. Um, I do actually read them, believe it or not. I do read them and I do enjoy them. Please like, please subscribe to keep more like videos like this and others coming. I've got all kinds of stuff that I usually do. And um, you know, I don't do much of Facebook, so I love YouTube. And you guys are really funny and entertaining and very smart. So that's my thing. And I appreciate it. And I, I love you guys for it. Later.